Um, obviously, special uh, day here today and tomorrow. We have our seniors luncheon today, uh, honoring those guys. We'll do some things with them uh, uh, tonight as as well as a part of our last meeting. Um, then we play the game, senior ga uh, senior days tomorrow night uh, against Nebraska. Uh, for just you know, unbelievable uh, people. You know, I, I love all four guys. Uh, each of them ha had a, has had a different journey, a different path, and uh, that's what makes it kind of cool uh, to be in coaching. The one thing I will say that's similar about all four is that all four of them, uh, Lord willing, um, you know, are getting ready to receive their degrees. You know, here in the here in the uh, here in the spring, They'll, we'll go four for four with all four guys, and uh, we're really proud of that. I know those guys are. Uh, as well, uh, they've put in a lot of time uh, and effort, and you're really talking about four guys academically that do what they're supposed to do and uh, are, are a coach's dream when it comes to the academic front. So I'm very, very proud of those guys. Um, you know, they, they've, uh, you know, Nana, um, you know, obviously has been um, with us the entire time. You know, what a great representative and ambassador for the school. Uh, for the community, the way he treats people, the way he leads, who he is as a student, how hard he plays, uh, how much he loves the University of Illinois. You know, it could go on and on and on. We're going to miss his uh, leadership, his ability to communicate. He's one of the most selfless individuals that I've ever coached uh, as an assistant or head coach. And, uh, man, has it been a privilege, uh, you know, to coach him. You know, Ray has had a phenomenal journey. Uh, grew up as a young man, wanting to young kid, you know, wanting to play at the at, at the U of I, and it means a lot to him to put on that jersey. And I think with everything he's been through, you know, personally, academically, uh, you know, physically, medically, athletically, you know, he'll tell you. I think it's made him even appreciate more as he's sitting there right now, saying, "Wow, you know, what a privilege it is." Um, you know, for him to have the opportunity to play uh, at Illinois. You know, he went to games when he was a kid and saw some of our great teams play, and it just it means a great deal to him and his family. That's pretty cool. You know, really the same with Ryan Schmidt. You know, I asked Ryan when he started watching Illinois basketball, and he was, you know, basically in diapers. You know, his mom and dad have been uh, fans, diehard for a long time. And, uh, you know, I think his tweet certainly, his 14 seconds of uh, fame, uh, when he got out there for the Michigan game and what that meant to him, you know, I, I think that that speaks volumes of of how he feels about this place, how he feels about Illinois. And then Ahmad, you know, obviously sacrificed a great deal, set out one to play one, um, to play uh, for his state school and uh, to be closer to home, to have the opportunity to play. Ahmad is a terrific person, a great teammate, and uh, has been willing to adjust to – to how we do things with uh, with open arms. And the mods really, you know, I always tell them all the time, if you have one uh, weakness, it's that you care so much about uh, uh, other people and probably worries about that even to a, uh, to a fault. Uh, but if that's a weakness, then that's a great one to have. Um, you know, he really worries about his teammates and are they taken care of, whether it's during a game on the court or off the court. He really cares about other people, and you got to give his mom and dad a lot of credit, certainly, uh, for how they've – you know, how they've raised him uh, for him to have that type of mentality. I think um, those guys are all, you know, right now playing as good as they've played all season. Talk about seniors dying hard, and, you know, those guys right now have an edge to them in practice. And, you know, today will be the last day they get a practice in the State Farm Center. And, you know, I think right now they're understanding that that, uh, uh, you know, sand in that hourglass is sifting through, you know, pretty quickly. So they're trying to make the most of every opportunity that they have. You know, as a staff, support staff, and as their teammates, you know, we're doing everything we can to, as Nana said at the outset of the season, to have, you know, no regrets. Um, and, uh, you know, we've operated that way all year with no excuses and been willing to adjust and adapt. And, you know, a lot of it starts with those guys and their leadership. But, you know, I'm really, really, uh, really proud uh, to have had the opportunity to coach you know, all four uh, seniors. You know, obviously tomorrow night we've got uh, Nebraska. Um, you know, for us, uh, obviously they got us in game one. Uh, I, I thought that uh, Nebraska was uh, the tougher team in game one, uh, re-watching the film again here the last 24 to 48 hours. You know, I thought that um, they imposed their will. I thought they were really, really good defensively. Uh, even now they're one of the best uh, defensive teams in the country. Statistically, they're hard to score against. They're very physical. 
You know, they've had five days to prepare for the game. I'm sure they're going to be ready. Uh, I anticipate it being a, 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 you know, a physical game, uh, being a very hard-fought game, high-intensity level from both teams. And, uh, you know, we've tried to prepare our guys accordingly yesterday and today uh, for that challenge tomorrow night. Questions? Did you hear about ticket sales yet? I did. That's pretty cool. Um, we sold out what Rob's uh, alluding to is uh, – we decided to send out an, an, an email with the 9 o'clock tip. And, you know, I've talked a lot about our fans throughout the year, not just the students, not just the Orange Crush. Both of those groups have been terrific. Our fans in general and the way that they've picked us up when we've had to go through some adversity and had to make some adjustments and, and try to figure things out. You know, I think they've been a big part, certainly, of our, of our home court uh, success and uh, to have an opportunity to uh, – pay them back, so to speak, and give them an opportunity to come, the students, uh, tomorrow night for free. And then they, they, they took it and ran with it. So a lot of credit goes certainly to, uh, uh, to marketing. A lot of credit goes to our, our students, obviously, that care uh, enough about our basketball program and about our seniors uh, to make sure that our building's uh, filled tomorrow night. We're you know, very thankful. We, we talk all the time about what a privilege it is to play here, how passionate our fans are, how much they care about our program. And uh, we certainly don't take that uh, lightly. So we'll be excited to see all those students in there tomorrow night. The way that you guys practiced and then we played leading up to the Northwestern game and in that game, have you seen that? Yeah, I have. Yesterday we were really good. Uh, we got to put it together again today. Uh, you know, but I thought we earned the right to play well by the way we practiced leading into the Northwestern game. And, um, you know, we did that again yesterday. And hopefully we'll come back with that same, uh, you know, mental and and, and physical edge that we had yesterday again today. You, you inherited Nana, but he seems to kind of fit exactly what you want out of your players. Just what's he meant? Yeah, it's funny you said that because Dustin reminded me yesterday he worked him out for the first time when we got here in the spring of 2012, and he came into my office and said, you're going to love coaching this kid. You know, he's your type of guy. I, I, I couldn't agree with you more, Jeremy. I mean, he plays with motor. He competes. Um, you know, I can count on him on and off the court. He thinks about others first. Um, he has a lot of uh, redeeming qualities. You know, he does. I mean, if, you know, Connor and Camden have a lot of Nana's qualities, I'll be the, you know, happiest and luckiest father in the world. What do you think of that? When are you going to be a father again? Could be any time. That's why DB has the cell phone back there. I like you guys, but if that thing buzzes with her name on there, I'm out of here. So, uh, but could be soon. You know, we, uh, you know, she's dilated right now. We're very excited and, you know, hopefully uh, we just uh, hope and pray for health for her and, and the baby. Where do you think where do you think Nana will be five years from now, John? You know, I don't know, Tup. Uh, I think he can play the game for a long time because uh, he's got great size and length and his ability to move for someone his size is extraordinary. Uh, the game, as we all know, has changed over the years and it's become a lot of pick and roll. Um, and you put him in a pick and roll defensively, he can – execute about any coverage that's known to mankind, and that's very rare uh, for a guy his size. And then uh, offensively, he's good in those situations because he has an ability to make pick-and-pop jumpers, you know. Um, he's also a guy that regardless of, of role or circumstance is going to be the same every day, and that's a huge deal uh, when you're putting together a team. So, you know, I think he can play for a long time. The one thing I know about him is whatever – you know, whatever he does, he's going to take great pride in it, and he's going to be successful. It's just the way he's wired. Coach, any emotion about uh, State Farm Center being completely different the next time you walk in there? Yeah, it's interesting. It hit me yesterday when we walked in there, Jim, for practice, uh, knowing that uh, we would practice yesterday, practice today, play uh, Wednesday night, and then it would be shut down again for a while. Um, and, and you're right. Thoughts go into your mind like, you know, when you leave the building on Wednesday night, uh, around midnight, the next time you're coming back in there, uh, certainly in, in a, a practice atmosphere or game atmosphere, the building's going to look entirely different. You know, that's pretty cool. I mean, that's pretty exciting for us because um, I think that's uh, something that's been much needed. And um, it's great growth and improvement and continues to push that needle forward uh, in the direction that uh, we want our program to go in, in all aspects. And obviously this one happens to be facilities. Cover Nana, what about the other three guys? What are they going to be doing over the next few weeks? Well, I think obviously Ray has an opportunity to play for a while. Stark, same thing. I think those guys all have aspirations to continue playing. 
uh, post college, and I think all of them can do it. Uh, you know, Schmitty, you know, he and I have talked. I always tease him. He's a business finance major. He's a phenomenal student. And I always tease him. I say, you know, one of these days I'm going to be working for you. Um, you know, he's really a bright guy, very smart, picks up things quickly. And uh, so I don't know if his aspirations are to play when finished. Um, you know, we'll help him in, in uh, any, any way that we can, obviously, kind of make that next step in that transition uh, into post-college world. No, I think he wants to do the uh, – he's got the degree in business finance, and that's what he, he wants to do, you know. Uh, he'll, be cr he'll be crunching numbers. So I'll, I'll have him uh, maybe outsource him as a uh, – DB will use him as our analytics guy, you know. Uh, but he's, he's really bright, um, really bright, and, and just, a, just a great uh, guy in terms of his, his character. Very accountable, very responsible. He's going to be very successful. Is there a turning point with him? I think Ray's had just a, a, a journey where everything that he's been through, whether it's injury, whether it's the, uh, you know, suspension, whether it's uh, becoming a completely different student here uh, than he was previously, um, he's been unbelievable academically. You know, multiple semesters with over a 3.0. I mean, just, you know, accountable. Um, his work ethic, you know, the number of times I've seen him in the practice facility on his own when he, when, you know, he, he, he knows or doesn't, doesn't know whether I'm coming in or not. I mean, just, you know, his ability to be extraordinarily committed, the way he's changed his body. I mean, he's just, he's really, I'm proud of him because he's really grown uh, up uh, a great deal over the course of the three years. And then to have the opportunity to earn a degree and be one of the very few in his family that have had that opportunity from such a prestigious institution like Illinois, I think means a lot to him and his family. It means a lot to me, you know, watching the progress he's made as a human being, as a student, and as a player, you know, has been very gratifying. You guys talked a lot the other night about how important these, these next games coming up are and, and must win and all that. Have you seen, did you ever say at any point where like kind of a light went on with those guys? Were they no, and I don't talk about that. I know Ahmad said that in the post game, but they'll tell you I don't talk about that. You know, I. My deal right now is this is our last uh, game at home. Uh, we want to honor the seniors. You know, we want to continue to play well at home. We've taken a major step in the right direction with that here in year three. Um, we want to we want to continue to move the ball like we moved the ball the other day. I thought that was good. And then we've got to have that same edge and defensive mindset that we had to start the game. Uh, I thought Hill with the play he made kind of that was a tone setting play. And, uh, you know, those are the things I've really talked about, Marcus, at this point, because those are the things that we can control. I talk to them a lot about controlling the controllables. And, um, you know, so – but at the same time, you know, someone asked me, you know, is it hard to, you know, dodge, you know, whatever position you're in right now. I think, you know, guys watch games at night. They're, they're watching the ticker. They're, they're on social media uh, to some extent. And so, you know, they know. I mean, they're smart guys. Um, but hopefully they've, they've learned that the, way, the best way to control the product or the end result is to try to control the process, you know, and that's what we're focused on right now. Any questions from the phone lines? All right, anything else for you? Doing anything different, John, than when you played him the first time around? Who's that? Nebraska, you're jumping ahead on me, Tup. Jinx, Tup's jumping ahead games. Jinx and free throws. I mean, he's, geez. Uh, you know, I, I would say the, the biggest difference, if you look at their, at their uh, roster, Tup, would be that they've had a lot of roster change from game to game in terms of who started, rotations that they played. In terms of their scheme defensively, I think they're terrific defensively. You know, one of the country's best, one of our league's best with their man defense. Um, you know, offensively, obviously, Petaway, Shields, terrific offensive players. You know, Pitchford uh, is, is a little bit of an X factor because you don't see very many fives that shoot and make threes. You know, last year he shot them at 41%. We know what he's capable of. You know, we're not, we're not uh, you know, regardless of what a stat sheet says, we know what he's capable of. Um, you know, they've had other guys. I think the freshman kid, Smith, at the point has started for him now. Here recently, I liked him going into the first game. I think he's continuing to get better as well as Fuller. 
Smith gives them physicality. Rivers had eight points and seven rebounds in game one. Gives them a lot of energy. You know, um, you know they they just they've got a you know Abraham gives them physicality. Their fifth year transfer from Georgetown. So you know they've got a lot of guys I think chipping in. They've got a big eleven man uh, you know uh, rotation, uh, and they've played different lineups and different rotations over the course of the time between game one and game two. So you know it makes it a little bit harder to prepare. You know, quite honestly, uh, because it's, there's not been a routine. It's not been very rote there, but. You know, we've got to be ready for whatever they throw at us. It's late in the year, and, you know, they would probably say, hey, to some extent, X and O-wise and what they do, we are who we are, and we kind of are who we are. There's not a lot of secrets when you're playing somebody tough for the second time or third time. It's late in the year. I mean, you know, you can wrinkle or adjust a thing or two, but at the end of the day, players got to make plays, and you got to play with some toughness. Jim, talk a lot about teams gelling or different versions of teams. How, how do you feel like this team? Well, I mean, obviously, I thought the other day we took a step in the right direction offensively and defensively. I thought that we, uh, both of those things were working very well together. I thought we played together, thought we were very unselfish, thought we guarded the ball together, thought we moved the ball together. You know, I thought that was a huge step in the right direction for us. That's how we had practiced for two days leading into it. It's how we practiced yesterday. Um, so hopefully, you know, some of those things that we've been hitting them with Jeremy, even through the midst of some things that were kind of out our out of our control in terms of, you know, roster change here and there, that some of those things are starting to become habits, you know, um, that they're relying on uh, to be successful in terms of how they play the game. With your health, maybe the emergence of Colbert and, and Morgan recently, as excited about your depth. As yeah, those guys played well. We're going to need everybody. It was a, it was the first time since uh, before before Ray's injury. Um, which was game two of the Big Ten schedule, that we've had a nine-man rotation that was totally, you know, healthy. I said that I said that before the game and after the game. No wrap on the hand, conditioning up to par, you know, no high fevers. Like, you know, we felt good. Now, some of that's out of your control. You know, the Lord blessed us with that the other day. Hopefully, bless us with that. Uh, bless us with that again tomorrow. Um, but it was nice to have that full allotment of guys, and I did think that Morgan and Colbert were made a big impact on the game on, on Saturday. And, uh, you know, we're, we're going to need uh, everybody. I thought uh, that all nine guys that uh, played as a major part of the rotation there contributed heavily. If, if, if Allison went into labor tomorrow at like uh, 8 o'clock or something like that, what, what's your plan? Well, my plan is to kind of play it by ear. I mean, I don't have a, you know, I, I figure I'll be led in the direction that I need to be led. Um, you know, obviously we've talked about it, we've prayed about it, but you know, our hope is that I can coach the game, and you know, and then I'll be there for, uh, when uh, you know when Kate is born. You know, that's our that's our plan. You know, so we'll see. Hopefully, hopefully, uh, hopefully the Lord has that plan too, Tup. We'll see.